Hey everyone, my name's Matt and this is Jake and welcome back to the Auto Answer Man YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a, another uh, look at Jake's truck, an update video. A lot has changed since our last video. Uh, the vehicle's running, driving, we're doing some tuning, meth injection, uh, I mean, tell them, what, what have you done? So far, um, like you said, we got the meth injection installed. Um, we also ended up installing 60 pound fuel injectors, so um, when the time comes, we'll be ready for a little bit more power. Um, we finished out all the exhaust wrap, and um, ended up finishing out this whole side of the exhaust. We got mufflers on it now. Um, which I don't think we had before. No, it's no I before. think we had a pipe sticking out just straight up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we have a hood. I just ended up making this little cable and some little spacers um, to hold the hood up to make sure it clears the intake. Um, simple, kind of ugly, but I didn't want to cut the hood or anything like that. The, so the only downside effective. to this, this setup, I mean, the, the hood closes, um, but when it's closed, it looks like the hood's open like a Here, standard car. Here, you got it? You see that? It looks like it's, so it's got a little bit of a gap. Um, but Good honestly, uh, yeah, it gets, <laughs> gets air flowing across the motor is by design, trust us. Well, this is a Nitrous Express uh, methanol controller. Yep. So this is a progressive kit, which is nice. It doesn't just hammer the full nozzle um, like an on-off switch. This is going to progressively add, add the methanol in, which will really help with tuning so we don't have rich and lean spots. You're running what, a how many gallon nozzle? 375 liter per hour. 375 liter per hour. So I, I think that's good for, on a boosted application, you said 550 I think 550 right? or 650. So a little more uh, methanol than's probably needed, but with the way this turbo is routed and everything, we're getting really hot air temps. Uh, I, just cruising around with like a 160. So yeah. it's sucking hot air right off the exhaust, which is already a big no-no. And then uh, compressing it going through the turbo. And this is just cruising. This is just cruising, this is what the temps are. So we might see closer to 200 degree temps without, um, without the methanol. So I think the methanol is very important. You do have a intercooler, air to water intercooler cooler core coming that's uh, all the way that should fit over in this area right yeah it should it should lay right in this open section so I'll end up routing the piping over this way yeah tie everything in together here we actually just did the passenger side for the auto locking doors and for the other guys who have Ford couriers this is what I ended up doing yeah, this is still hot no we're good so this is the actual locking mechanism for the door. It's very mechanical style. So this is when you push your door handle button, this little metal lever here stops the door handle from opening. This is unlocked, so now the door handle can open up all the way. So I ended up welding this bolt on here and I'll show you on the driver's side how it turned out with the uh, door lock actuator. You can see when this actuates, really a very simple design so when I end up hitting my door locks um, we got unlock which it's already unlocked lock unlock so for the courier guys out there if you want to copy me it's really really kind of a barbaric way to do it but it's effective and sturdy what what kit is that off of Amazon which I can put the link inside the bio for you guys if you want to get the same kit I got I'm getting a new steering wheel on today um, this steering wheel is an inch and a half narrower in diameter, so it gives me a lot more room to move my legs around and do what I need to do in here to drive this thing. So it's just an Amazon Kindle. I got it uh, for $35 right off of Amazon. You open up your gauges, it connects via Bluetooth, and uh, then you got your boost and your AFR. Everything you need right here for, um, I think, this whole package combined is probably under $300. Yeah, so these are Mazda Miata seats out of a 2000 Mazda Miata. I ended up, um, which I will be re reinforcing these, but um, so I got big metal plates on the bottom underneath them, um, some grade eight bolts, and then just some simple square tubing, um, four inch, or four and a half inch, and three and a half inch right here to give it the right angle. We ended up converting to full LED lights. I ended up getting a system from Racewire Solutions, um, which I'm really happy with. Everything 
Um, their wiring diagram and everything was really clear and concise, easy for me to uh, understand and get this whole thing wired up. So basically no wire has been untouched on this car at this point. So headlights. These were some cheapos on Amazon. I want to say they were under $100. So you can see there's the exit. We have a vibrant, ultra quiet SLP loudmouth, um, two and a half inch all the way back. Um, and then for the cutout, it dumps out at a three inch. And then chokes down to a two and a half inch down inside there. I also ended up routing my wastegate back into the downpipe um, just to keep things a little bit quieter. And there's the downpipe for the cutout. Yeah, so for tuning for the, the meth injection with the air temp sensor to keep everything safe, most vehicles, especially all the newer ones, but this one's a little older and still does have it, it has a um, under your spark, you could go to advanced, then you have base corrections for fuel, AIT, that's air uh, intake air temperature, ECT, uh, engine coolant temperature. So intake air temperature, this is how the factory table looks. And we're getting, you know, 160 degree air temps. So when we're driving around, you know, in this area, it's, it's naturally pulling one degree. And when we start leaning on it some, we start going up in, in uh, this in the air mass you know, uh, 0 0.56, 0 0.68, it's pulling three degrees. So it's pulling that timing, which is good for these high temps. Um, when we start spraying methanol across the uh, air temp sensor, we're gonna be seeing closer, you know, 80, 60, 50 degree air temps, because as that methanol evaporates and goes across that air temp sensor, it's gonna drop it drastically. Um, and so these, this is where, we're not gonna do it yet, not until everything's dialed in, but in this area is where we'll add that timing in. So as things cool down, that methanol starts spraying, it'll see a cooler charge, and we'll throw you know maybe two or three degrees timing in there. But if the meth ever fails and the air temp goes way up, it's gonna pull that degree, those three degree timing. So that allows us to get a little more out of the meth and actually tune for it, not just the fueling, but actually grab more power because we are running meth. The only downside of that is the delay it takes for the air temp sensor to cool down, he does have a fast response air temp sensor, so that should make a big difference. Um, but that's, if all out race application, you just put it here. Driving, uh, daily drivers, you wanna put in the air temp sensor table. We're gonna take it out for a um, quick spin around the block, gather a little data. So we went out, we gathered some data. Um, we're able to do a little wide open throttle stuff. Go ahead and uh, save the log. Yeah, let me let me get this saved real fast actually, just to make sure. Um, Loki, 60 pounders, boom, just override it. So I'm gonna review this log and make some corrections and then uh, go do some more pulls. We need to pull some fuel out in the higher RPMs. It got, got pretty rich, um, high nines, low tens. I mean, safe, but too rich for a long pull. Um, it, you know, that could wash the cylinders and stuff. And, and I got to double check, make sure the methanol was coming in. We should see the air temps cool down when it comes in. So we're going to watch for that and we'll uh, make some changes and go out and do some more pulls. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
without any traction. So I don't know if we've talked about this much, but this is an open differential in this truck. So I mean, that was probably a one wheel heel, but it actually hooks really good. I guess because it's so lightweight, it doesn't have a lot of weight to move or something, but one wheel would do enough for it. <laughs> yeah, it only needs one. It's like it pulls like the Cadillac, maybe similar. Different, it's just a different feel in a vehicle like this. They always yeah. feel so, faster when they're kind of like sketchy. open and sketchy <laughs> and a little rattly and stuff. All right, you guys, so that's kind of our update for Loki now. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Um, we're happy to answer any questions. If you guys have any questions about the courier, um, we might even make a video just to further explain things if you guys want to see. Other than that, that's going to be it for today. I guess we'll, um, the next video we should be at the track with this thing, right? You want to go to the track? Yeah. So soon, some track footage. Um, we do got a rear end for the blue truck, Sierra's truck. Um, I guess you guys probably didn't know, but the true track exploded on that truck. So now I have a 2015 12 bolt, nine and a half, 33 spline ice. Um, very similar to the 14 bolt and the new, new body styles. Um, so if we could get that one in, we could have a little race. Oh yeah. Um, I think that'd be good, but you know, you guys already know the big turbo V8 is going to walk away. With so. all the stickiness on the rear. Oh, we'll be see. Gone. So look forward to that video coming up soon.